Bruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Tonight's uh, lecture will be on a lion tamer. That should be interesting. Uh, Tanakh, Torah Nevi'im and Kesuvim, is replete with references to lions. We all know the lions are called the king of the jungle. I believe they are metaphorically connected to the Eight Sahara, the evil inclination, and our struggle to overcome the challenges of life. You know, there's a story told of a lion who was telling his two young lion cubs that they should fear no animal, for they are the king of all beasts, the strongest of all animals. And they were out and about, and they passed the city, and as they passed the city, they saw a picture on the city gates of Dov and the Melech, of King David ripping apart the jaws of a lion with his bare hands. <laughs> they ran home in a panic. They told their father what they had seen and questioned what he had told them about their strength and their position. He answered them that what they had seen only proved that what he had told them was correct. The reason the picture was on the gates of the city wall uh, was because of its, it was something that was out of the norm, very unusual. They had nothing to fear. Our evil inclination is a formidable foe with immense strength and determination, much like that of a lion. The metaphor of a lion is also connected to our Yetzatov, our good inclination. When used properly, it gives us strength and confidence to overcome our evil tendencies and to succeed in our mission in this world. The Markava, the throne of God, has four figures on the four corners of it. Each corner contains a figure that represents kingship. An eagle on one side, the king of birds. A bull, the king of domesticated animals on another. Man, the king of the world. And a lion, the king of wild animals. Two of the tribes of Israel are referred to as lions. When Yaakov, our father, blessed his sons on his deathbed, in the book of Bereshit, in the portion of Ayachi 49.9, he refers to Yehuda as a young lion who has risen from its prey. He crouches, like, lies like a lion, like an awesome lion who will rouse him. Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu continued where Yaakov, our father, left off, blessing all the tribes of Israel before he dies. He refers to Dun in the book of Devarim, the last of the books of the Torah. And the portion of Zotah Bracha, 3322, is a young lion springing from Bashan. Now, Yehuda was the first of the tribes to lead the march as they traveled through the desert during the 40 years. Dan was the last of the tribes when they, when they traveled. The whole nation was protected by these two powerful tribes. Together, they afforded security to the nation, much like a lion protects his pride. The lion is also alluded to in the temple. The Medrash says that the heavenly fire that burned on the copper altar had the shape of a lion. In addition, the temple itself was compared to a lion in its construction. It was constructed wide at the front and narrow at the back, much like a lion who was wide at the shoulders and narrow at the hips. In Pirkei Avot, chapter 5, Mishnah 20, Yehuda ben Tamo said, Be strong as a lion to serve your father in heaven. The Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, 1 1, opens with the statement that with the, that with the strength of a lion, one should rise in the morning for the service as creator. Blessed be he. The name for a lion in, he, in Ivrit, in Hebrew, is Ari, spelled Aleph, Resh, Yud, He. The word is an acronym for Aleph, stands for the month of El, Resh, Rosh Hashanah, Yud, Yom Kippur, and He, Hoshana Rabbah. We have a belief that the month of El begins the 40-day period of tshuva, of repentance. There are those opinions that say the period of forgiveness extends until the end of Sukkot, again, Hoshana Rabbah. Now we have a belief based on the Talmud that a Baal Tshuva, a repentant person, is even greater than a Tzaddik, as it says in the Gemara in Brachot, Lamed Dalet Omed Beis. To Amar Rav Avua, Rav Avua said, Mokam Shabalei Tshuva Omdim, in a place where repentant people stand, Tzaddikim Gemurim, 
completely righteous individuals, ainim omnim, they cannot stand in the same place. But, but the question becomes, how is that possible? After all, a tzaddik rarely, if ever, sins. A Baal Tshuva, on the other hand, <laughs> has countless sins. So how can he be greater than a tzaddik? Everything is relative to the challenge. Imagine if you had two people, both who become religious. One person has a tendency to get angry every day. The other person only gets angry twice a year. Now the person who gets angry daily to, due to his commitment to God and his Torah works on himself and now only gets angry four times a week. Whereas the person who would get angry twice a year still gets angry twice a year even though he has connected to God in his Torah. Who is greater in God's eye? The answer is the person who gets angry four times a week, even though he gets angry twice as much in one week than the other person who only gets angry twice in a year. But why? The answer is because he changed himself. He is not perfect, but he is working on himself. He is connected to God. The other person is still the same person, that he was before he became religious. His commitment is to himself, not to God. Nothing has changed. He may have become observant, but is he truly religious? God has given us his, given us his Torah as a gift. It is an instruction manual, a map, directing us to, place, to a place of goodness and godliness. It was meant to help us to overcome the greatest challenge in our life ourselves. When things go wrong in our lives, we blame our everyone and everything else. Everyone and everything, but not ourselves. All of our happiness and sorrow can be traced back to how we perceive our existence. God expects us to step up to the plate for us to accept our responsibility. We as Baal Tshuvas are similar to lion tamers. When you go to the circus and you see the lion tamer enter the lion's cage with his whip and his chair, you're very impressed. He seems to show no fear. He's able to make the lions do all kinds of tricks, even jumping through fire. Very impressive. However, he must always be aware that though he may be able to get the lions to do all of their tricks, they are still lions. He must always be aware of where he is standing in relation to the lion. The lion will follow the commands of his trainer as long as the trainer stays a certain distance away from the lion. In that case, it will act like a pussycat. However, should the trainer take one step into the lion's personal area, it will no longer act as a pussycat. Then its true nature will surface and it will attack the trainer. The trainer must always be aware that though he may able, be able to teach the lion to act like a pussycat, in the end, it's always a lion. Same is true about Chuva. Though he has left his secular, material, and immoral ways, there still lies within him a ferocious lion. He needs to be aware of the threat that his personal lion represents. It is an obstacle that stands in the way of his choice of serving God and fulfilling God's Torah and mitzvot. Though he may go into the lion's cage every day and be successful, he must never, never become complacent or cocky. He needs to stay focused and stalwart in his service and dedication to God and his religious conviction. Serving God is not a part-time commitment. It never ends, nor does the lion stop being the wild beast that he was created to be. If you think that he is no longer a threat, then you get closer to those weaknesses and desires that you enjoyed in your previous lifestyle. The results can be devastating. Much like an alcoholic who goes to an AA meeting, Alcoholics Anonymous. The first thing that he says when he stands and, and addresses people that are, that are good, uh, there, he says, I am an alcoholic. It never changes. In Pirkei Avot, chapter 2, Mishnah 4, Hillel says, Do not trust yourself until the day that you die. 
The only thing that removes the challenge of life is death itself. Even if you think that you have conquered your challenge, every day brings with it something new. You know, there was a Rebbe that told his students that the evil inclination is an axe murderer who wants to cut off your head. One of his students asked, and what if you don't feel that way? And the Rebbe answered, then he has already cut off your head. This is why a Baal Tshuva is greater than a Tzaddik. Once you have tasted from the fruit of your passions, the possibility of returning to them is much greater than one who has never experienced that which is forbidden. You know, fear of the unknown can be a great deterrent against sinning. The Baal Tshuva does not have that fear. He has tasted sin and what's worst, enjoyed it. The side of evil has what to sell. It may be superficial, but for the moment it can be very pleasurable. Once one has allowed the lion to reside in his mind, it will never leave. The only option you have is to control it. The lion that resides inside of you, your Yetzirah, your evil inclination, knows you better than you know yourself. He, needs, he knows all your weaknesses and he has no limitations. He doesn't fight fair. He has one purpose, to make you sin. He tricks you, convinces you that it's not that bad a sin or uh, no one's perfect. Each one of us has his own special lion, custom made for our specific weaknesses and challenges. We cannot take him lightly. We must stay awake and focused. It says in Mishle, Proverbs 17.9, Mayim Ganuvim, Mayim Ganuvim Taku, Yim Taku, excuse me, that stolen waters are sweet. From this verse in Proverbs, we get a sense of just how persuasive and powerful the side of evil can be. Water is water. It doesn't change. It's never sweet. However, the Yetzirah can make that which is tasteless not only sweet, but addictive. The only way that we as lion tamers can be successful is by being honest with ourselves about who we are, knowing our strengths and our weaknesses. As Shlomo Melch said in the opening verse of Kohelis, Hakol Hevel, everything is for naught. But the word Havel is also an acronym, the He for the five books of the Torah that begin with a Bez and ends with a Lamed, Hevel. The only way we can beat that lion that lies within each one of us is to connect to God Almighty and his Torah. And with that, may we merit to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sikainu quickly and in our time. Thank you so much for coming. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.